Zhao Felix completed. Mudrick on the way. Root Weghorst almost over the line. Gwen Doozy could be coming back to the Premier League as well. Guys, welcome back to another transfer roundup here on DR Sports. You're back with myself, Fuad. And listen, we got a lot to get through. There's been a lot happening the last 24 hours. There's been a lot of updates as well. And listen, let's get through them. We got Zhao Felix, the big news of the day today, completing a loan move from Atletico Madrid, having signed a Portuguese international for £11 million for the rest of the season. And this is without a permanent fee being included within the deal. And Atletico Madrid also extending the contract of Zhao Felix till 2027, I believe, right before the deal was concluded. There is no obligation to buy. This is a very interesting move now. Obviously, with Zhao Felix having struggled at Atletico Madrid since the 127 million signing that was record-breaking at the time, he really hasn't lived up to expectations. This is now potentially an opportunity for a fresh start for him, essentially. But is it a good move is the question I ask. Because it's a fresh start where you're coming into a disjointed Chelsea team, a team that really doesn't have an ethos or an identity at the moment that's gaining its teeth with the new ownership, with the new manager. And he's coming into this now, having to try and refine his form as well, refine himself, especially after a good, exciting World Cup. He probably has a bit of confidence coming into this move. But the real question I ask is, how does he fit into this Chelsea team? And you let me know, guys at home, because I'm very interested to know how he's going to fit into this front line. Because you've got Kai Havertz there as well, who plays in that kind of similar position off the left, can play the false nine. How do they fit in together? You've still got Sterling there. There's a lot of options there. A lot of options there. Guys, let me know. Is that a good move? Because does this also ask the question, do Chelsea have a plan when they sign players? Because... It almost seems like a scattergun approach, in my personal opinion, where he's a great talent and, a, and a potentially could be a, a game changer. But it's such a out of nowhere signing, in my opinion, because I don't see where he fits in personally. But again, I ask, is, is when you add quality to a team, does that improve your team? Yes. Do Chelsea need quality improvements in attack? Yes. So it could work for them, but then it could not. And this could end up going really badly where either way, if he does turn up, you've then got to feed him back to Atletico Madrid where they're in control for the fees. Guys, let me know. Is this a good move for Zhao Felix? Have Chelsea bit off more than they can chew? Are they doing a scattergun approach? And now we move on and stay in London to Arsenal with Mikhailo Mudrik. And of course, sources close to the deal to both Shakhtar and Arsenal, say it's closer than ever. Arsenal target Mudrik is in Turkey at the moment with Shakhtar the next for their training winter camp. But Arsenal have had two bids rejected, but it is believed that Shakhtar are willing to compromise and Arsenal are getting closer to a deal. Now, when you talk about upgrades and improvements, where I'm saying Jao Felix might not necessarily fit into Chelsea, I think Mudrik is kind of that X-factor game changer that Arsenal really need when you're going for the title when you need that kind of breath of fresh air to come in a player who's definitely got that X factor about him in my opinion even though people might say he hasn't played a lot for Shakhtar when you watch this guy you can see he's something and in the Champions League this season I feel like he's shown enough the fee might be a little bit crazy in my opinion and I think Premier League clubs if you look at the top 15 record signings it's not a great look for them there's been a lot more misses than hits in that window in those um, big top 15 record signings. But with Mudrik, I feel like he could be one of those that really brings that kind of impetus that Arsenal need in that lineup. They've got Saka. They've got Martinelli. Jesus has gone down now. Enketia stepping up, but is it enough? Can they just have that little bit extra more to kind of kick in? And for me, I think this shows the ultimate ambition of the board, where people used to question the Arsenal board a lot and say, can they back the manager? Can they push this team to be back to what Arsenal used to be? If this Mudrik signing gets done, I've never seen this Arsenal board act like this before. Because Arteta's being backed in two whole summer windows, and now mid-season, he's being backed with a power signing. This is, this is exactly what Arsenal need. And the fact that Mudrik is a, almost a borderline diehard Arsenal fan at this point, because... Anytime you look at his Instagram or Twitter, that's all he's tweeting about more than his own club. But it seems like it's a perfect match. And 
Arsenal, I feel like, would be foolish to miss this opportunity. But guys, let me know what you think of this move. Is it one that could bring Arsenal the title? Or is it one where Arsenal are biting off more than they can chew? Is it another Pepe 2.0, potentially? Because they paid 75 million for him, and look how that turned out. So there's a lot of times we've seen in this Premier League when you pay big money, it doesn't always go to plan. But then you see in cases like Virgil van Dijk, when it does go right, people forget the fee very quickly. Mikhailo Mudrik will move on anyway to another team in red, and that's Manchester United, who, of course, have been linked with Woot Weghorst over the last couple of days, who has pretty much said his goodbyes to Besiktas. And the Besiktas um, chief has actually confirmed that Man United will be, at, Woot Weghorst will be allowed to leave the club once the Turkish Giants can secure a replacement. The Reds have reached a full deal with the attacker, and a loan fee would cost about $2.5 million. Now, again, I ask, is this a signing that Man United need? In my eyes, I think for sure. You look at their forward options and you could say, yeah, the rejuvenation of Rashford this season has been brilliant. But they're still missing something. And I think with losing Ronaldo, it's an extra body that you need in there. And I think Weghorst showed with Burnley last year that he can definitely provide you a little something. I think you look at Ten Hag and the way his system is, he loves a target man. He loves a Sebastian Haller. He loves a Klaas Jan Huntelaar. He loves a, those kind of big physical forwards. He loves that, but he'll get those busy guys around him. And I think you look at United, they've got a lot of those busy players with the Antonis, with the Rashfords, with the Sanchos, who if he comes back in from the mountains, we'll see what he can do. But Weghorst can be a nice addition, I feel like, in that um, team for sure. But does this deal make sense for both parties? You guys let me know because... In my opinion, I think both parties definitely need this. Wootweg horse is living nice as a legend in Turkey, but who doesn't want a Premier League challenge? And I think last year, having fought in the muds of the Premier League, now to come and get the chance to come and fight for Champions League football, what better way to come back to the Premier League? And for United, what better way? Low risk, low fee. And you know what? It could work out nicely. So in my opinion, I think it's a win-win move. And it's only a matter of time, basically, before United kind of wrap that deal and get it done essentially it's just up to Besiktas to find a replacement but let's move on to some other business throughout the Premier League as well because stories have come out that Guendouzi could possibly be coming back to the Premier League with Aston Villa obviously with their new boss Unai Emery who's going into his first window here has been given quite the transfer kitty and it is rumored to be around 27 million pounds and it is said that he's keen to reunite with Emery, who he worked with, obviously, at Arsenal and signed him at Arsenal, if I'm not mistaken. But Guendouzi is one of those players who, even as a Spurs fan, I've got to say, quality player, in my opinion. I think you always, you always wonder if he crosses that kind of line of playing on the edge. Personally, I love that. I think that's what you kind of need in those types of players. But he's also got that technical ability to kind of bring a bit of quality when you need it. With Villa, they're going through quite the kind of turnaround with Unai Emery. Is that the kind of soldier he needs to get in to kind of solidify his team? He's obviously got a lot of midfield options with Louise, McGinn, Ramsey. There's so many there already. Coutinho as well, Buendia. Is it a signing they necessarily need? I don't know. But could it be one that just kind of comes in, invigorates the dressing room, gives a lift to the other guys, provides a bit of competition? For sure. 27 million is a fair whack. But I think it would be kind of worth the fee to pay. But let me know, Gwenduzi, back to Villa. Is that a good move or not, guys? Let me know in the comments. And of course, lastly, we will touch on Obama Yank, who 12 months ago was leaving Arsenal, of course, in a cloud, going to Barcelona, back to merry scenario. For six months, he lived a dream. And of course, the levers happened. He came back to Chelsea and it hasn't been as pretty since. Struggling for goals, struggling for form getting subbed on and then substituted the other day. And now he's at a stage where, again, January, we've come around and he's linked with Barcelona. And the only way it seems like Barcelona have said they want to do this deal is if Aubameyang is sent completely on a free, on a renegotiated contract, and, and they can offload Memphis to buy. Those are the three conditions in which Barcelona have said they'd be willing to take Aubameyang back. And at the moment, it doesn't look like there's much use for him at Chelsea, especially with João Felix having just come in. It just seems like he's fallen further down the pecking order, further out of favour, and it just seems like that PR stunt to wind up Arsenal fans has really, really not worked out. 
But listen, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments sections. I want to hear your thoughts about Aubameyang. Gwendouzi, is it time for him to come back to the Premier League? Woot Weghorst, is that what United need? Is Mudrick the thing that Arsenal need to push them to the title? Is Felix going to be a good move? We've seen all the loan moves Chelsea have made over the years with Pato, with Falcao. Is this another one of those? Saul? Or is it this? Is this the one that kind of the missing link they need up front? Let me know in the comments, guys. Another episode of DR Transfers with myself, Fuad. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and let me know your thoughts in the comments about everything we've spoken about today, guys. Take care.